and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We are so glad to have you here tonight. This broadcast is put on by SPED Homeschool. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and we empower parents to teach unique learners and um, unique learners in their homes. And so, um, so every month we focus on a different topic. And as we do that, we just bring on special guests and we talk about different topics every month based on some things that just would be great to know about or information that would be helpful in being able to homeschool your struggling learner at home. And this month, the month of May, we're focusing on outdoor learning and how do we make that more effective? That's what we're going to talk about tonight is creating successful outdoor learning experiences. And um, so this broadcast is, is put on by our sponsors and also by viewers like you. We are a nonprofit, and if you want to be able to support our ongoing broadcasts, um, we have a way for you to donate. If you go to our website, you can um, scroll down, and there's a donate button there, and you can donate there, or um, you can donate on Facebook as well. And, and that, um, that money goes into just making these broadcasts happen, helping to um, put resources on our website and a whole bunch of other things. So so anyways, I'm still waiting for my guest to arrive. So I'm hoping he shows up. Otherwise, this is going to be a very short show because I don't know how much that I have to share with you about outdoor learning. I probably can share a little bit. But um, anyways, while we're waiting for my guest, um, Dr. Daniel Franklin, to arrive, I would love to have a conversation with you. And that's why we broadcast live. So if you're watching on YouTube, on Periscope, or on our Facebook page, you can comment down below the video, and we can see that. I can see that. <laughs> and um, and we can bring that into the conversation. So, um, so if you have any questions, comments about outdoor learning, what what do you do? That's that's always a good question. Um, and and then also if you have someone that uh, may be starting homeschooling or maybe has been homeschooling for a while, they're figuring, how do I get my kids outside? What, what do we do um, to enjoy this beautiful weather? I don't know where you live, um, but you can definitely comment on that. Let me know where you're, why you're watching from and, and also just what do you do to get your kids outside? How do you um, make learning successful um, for for your family. So um, it looks like Dr. Franklin is here. And so I'm going to pop him up onto the screen and we are going to get this um, conversation going. Welcome. Oh, you're muted. You're going to have to turn your, your microphone on. There we go. <laughs> I think I can hear you now. Well, hello. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. Great to see you. <laughs> well, you too. How are you faring these days? I'm feeling really good. Yes, I um, I've uh, I'm, I'm cancer free, and um, feeling better than I ever have before. Actually, I'm stronger than I was before all <laughs> the mess happened. So, um, yeah, it's 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 been good. That's wonderful to hear. Well, you look great, and it's well, wonderful to be speaking you. with you this evening. Yes, you too. I um, had a little monologue mm -hmm. going on with uh, <laughs> with my viewers while we were waiting for you, and so um, I told them I was going to run out of content really fast. <laughs> so, so it's good to see you. I think the last time you were on my show, it was, I think you said, August of 2019, so before all this pandemic stuff started, and so a lot has changed. Well, I'm glad to have you back. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. And uh, uh, forgive me for being tardy. I was okay. staring at the screen and waiting, not, oh. re not realizing there was one one more button for me to click. Oh, <laughs> forgive me for, for that. I I was up and ready to go uh, quite some time ago. But I'm uh, here now, excited to be speaking with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, and and your audience as well. And I know uh, your audience should feel free to reach out to me. I, at some point, I'm sure you'll provide them with uh, contact yes. information for me. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, we'll get them connected to you and your services and um, tell them about your book and um, just all the, the wonderful things that you have to help parents with um, struggling learners. So so that um, we would definitely will do. But um, and I can put that up just quickly. Um, so uh, Franklin Education Services or and if you're listening on the podcast, it's franklined.com. And, and so, so you can find that and we'll have you talk about that as we were wrapping up too. So we'll dive into that. But, um, but the last time we talked, we were talking about language-based learning disabilities. And I had this opening for outdoor learning and heard that you wanted to talk about that. So I'm excited to hear what you have to share because I threw some questions together, but um, I feel free to take rabbit trails with us. <laughs> so we can talk about just about anything on, you know, creating successful outdoor learning experiences for kids. Absolutely. And I spend my life outdoors. I grew mm. up camping and hunting and fishing and awesome. I continue to spend a lot of time um, out in the wilderness. I Good. enjoy the mountains. I enjoy the mm -hmm. desert. I enjoy uh, marine environments, uh, walking beaches and estuaries and salt marshes. Uh, there's really nothing better than being mm -hmm. outside for any person of any age. And there's yeah. actual science, scientific evidence that shows that exposure to being outdoors and in the wilderness promotes all kinds of important mm -hmm. cognitive skills and a sense of health and well-being. So mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a very big advocate of getting out to, outside and doing things outdoors um, are there certain things that I can share with your audience in terms mm -hmm. of ideas and maybe you want to go by age ranges or certain sure. interests? Yeah. yeah, I'm up for anything. So, <laughs> but, but that would be good because I, I think we, we hit different demographics of parents and families and sometimes we can, you know, just stick in a certain niche and then parents are like, well, what do I do with this teenager <laughs> or, or what do I do with my preschooler? Cause they are going to do the same types of things. Uh, but, you know, we have big families too. And then how do we include everybody in, in activities as well? So that can be really challenging, especially when there's a wide age range. Um, yeah. And sometimes if it's a really wide age range, you know, there's probably going to be certain events that are more suited to older kids and certain mm -hmm. things for younger kids. Now, right. now, even the youngest child with appropriate support and help and maybe being carried, uh, yes, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, being out on a wilderness trail, as long as it's level and flat and mm -hmm. so also you want to choose environments, especially with your, with especially young children, where there's not going to be a lot of insects and bugs and things. Yeah. Older kids are a little more robust, a little more uh -huh. resilient. <laughs> That's true. And in those environments where there's mosquitoes and mm -hmm. uh, flies and horse flies and uh, yes. spiders is, is uh, not... <laughs> Although my 16-year-old still can't handle the spiders. <laughs> <laughs> so... So when we're with older kids, you know, of course, we want to be sensitive to what their needs and interests are as well. Mm -hmm. And there are some kids, young kids who love to be outdoors, but they want to be on a beach. Um, they want to be uh, they're here in Southern California, where I'm speaking to you from, are amazing botanical gardens. They're immense. Mm -hmm. And you can walk for hours and still not mm -hmm. see all of them. So getting out. And I know even in Texas, uh, uh, where you are, yeah. you are correct. And mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, I was visiting with my family there in, uh, in Texas, and we spent a day in Dallas where there's just some exquisite uh, botanical gardens. Um, mm -hmm. And th those can be environments that kids can enjoy and love and love being in that are a little more, um, you know, they, they don't present as many of the challenges that maybe being right. up in the mountains and mm -hmm. being in a rugged terrain where there mm -hmm. might be lots of insects. Um, but there are some kids who prefer that, who want to be uh, um, up and out and away. Um, right. There's a real exhilaration that teenagers get when they're <laughs> with a small group and in a challenging environment. We want mm -hmm. to be safe and take safety precautions, right. but mm -hmm. you know, getting up into the mountains and on mountain trails and with right. proper supervision and training mm -hmm. and oversight, spending a night there uh, mm -hmm. or two or three um, 
are things that some older kids can really in, enjoy. Yeah, yeah. We took um, my sister and I, we had four 13 year olds because all of our, our kids and nieces and nephews were all the same age. And we took them up to the Boundary Waters canoe area for a week. And, you know, you just pack in all your stuff and, and they enjoyed it so much, but it was nice to have that same age group where you, they could, we're all kind of at the same level enjoying that, that experience. Now, some, sure. something to do outside outdoors would be, you know, trails and hiking um, and botanical gardens and, mm -hmm. um, you know, visiting deserts and so forth. But Another way to get kids outdoors and having fun is to do sports, getting them out there uh, yes. in, in the summer mm -hmm. months, um, get them out on the beach or out mm -hmm. on a field for volleyball or soccer or softball yeah. um, or, or doing things in the water, uh, mm -hmm. sailing and swimming and boating mm -hmm. and surfing and doing things um, in all, all different environments mm -hmm. that and doing a sport related activity is sometimes uh, gives an incentive for, for mm -hmm. kids to get outside here in Southern California. We have a lot of trail races, organized trail uh -huh. races and runs. Um, uh -huh. My nephew who is from Texas, I know he's competed in a lot of triathlons of various mm -hmm. length. Mm -hmm. um, there are some triathlons that are quite manageable. They're um, short swim, reasonably short run, reasonably short, Russ, a cycle ride. And uh, that's something that got him very motivated yeah. uh, to yeah. do things outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, there's so many different sports. I think when we think sports, we think, you know, baseball, football, you know, soccer, but just those lifelong sports, the ones that they're going to take into adulthood, you know, and focusing on, on things like that, that, that maybe even kids with, with physical disabilities, like you talked about sailing, you, you can get kids on a sailboat. I know there's even um, groups that sailing groups that'll take kids with disabilities out to show them how to do that. Um, so there's, there's just a wide variety of things. If we open up our mind to what sports are and, and how to get outside. So those are some great suggestions. Love that. You know, in addition, um, you know, if locomotion is a challenge as it is for mm -hmm. some individuals, I'm um, riding horses or, oh, yeah. and, or taking mule rides. And, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, then there are motorized vehicles that are uh, mm -hmm. done safely. ATVs uh, mm -hmm. can be a, mm -hmm. a nice way to get out and about. Um, and there are lots of guided tours for uh, children, yeah. teens, and young adults with uh, visual impairments um, that can still be very exciting. And mm. um, fragrances and sounds and other experiences we can have in nature, even if, if we are uh, lacking one of our senses or, or another, or in mm -hmm. some cases, more than one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about, you know, the, the senses and how... Because inside we don't we don't think about that as far as learning, but but just engaging the whole body in in the process and getting outside does that because we've got so many environmental things that you're not controlling that um, your kids are experiencing. So those are so yeah, love that. It's great. Um, so you know, as far as getting kids outside and um you know what if parents tend to not be the the outdoorsy type and and they're they're kind of thinking well what do what do we do that you know how would you even get started don't know what what to even tap into that's in your community and what have you done or do you know about well fortunately the, the internet has just become an, a wonderful <laughs> resource now yeah. And if you're parents and you haven't done a lot of things outside, um, you, you'll find quite readily a lot of groups are, will welcome you to join them. Mm. Um, those of us who spend a lot of time outside, as I do, we love um, being the guide and being, right. um, uh, being the person who helps someone learn to enjoy a new activity outside in nature, um, another sport. Uh, yeah. like sailing um, mm -hmm. I taught sailing for a number of years and I, I oh, really enjoyed awesome. that and those of us who teach sailing and, mm -hmm. and boating um, 
love the opportunity to mm -hmm. teach and and it's important not to be shy about getting lessons from other adults i felt you yeah. as, I taught sailing for years i love teaching sailing to someone who's never been sailing before mm -hmm. and i've never even been in a boat but it brought such joy to my heart to mm -hmm. share with someone for whom sailing was brand new and those yeah. of us who teach sailing or boating skills or hunting or fishing skills mm -hmm. um we love introducing these sports to people who've never done it before and if a parent wants to learn a little bit about those sports before taking their uh children out to enjoy them too mm -hmm. um find someone like me who really loves the opportunity to share yeah. the, the joy of outdoor activities that's great yeah my we lived the neighborhood we lived in before this one up in we lived by lake conroe in texas and it's a huge lake where they do sailing and on i don't know if you know the the app next door so like neighborhoods get together so a guy just posted on there i love to sail anybody want to try so my husband and daughter signed up they learned to sail and then we bought a sailboat <laughs> <laughs> so but um but yeah it just like you said i mean people just want to share and it's it's so cool you start connecting more with other people get outside and and you just start to learn new new things you can do together my nephew when he started doing uh, triathlons he was brand new to them mm -hmm. and and he was really impressed by how welcoming uh the triathlon groups he started with he found like oh, an introductory great. level group mm -hmm. and uh yeah um it's uh those of you those of your listeners who are wondering how to uh engage um have a lot of faith and confidence that mm -hmm. those out there who are offering a helping hand mean it and yeah, yeah. We, we, mm -hmm. we really want to hear from you and see you and have you contact us so mm -hmm. we can share with you the great joy of outdoor activities and sports and recreation. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. I was on a women's retreat last weekend and all these women signed up to go paddleboarding. None of them had been on a paddleboard before. And I was like, oh, I own a paddleboard. So I, I ended up teaching all of them how to paddleboard. <laughs> but it was fun. I and yeah can't do much on a little lake but so but they had a great time so yeah um paddle boards kayak um yeah, kayaks are um, great small sailing boats the sailfishes and sunfishes mm -hmm. um, rowing um and obviously there are motorized uh, uh water sports yeah. vehicles as well jet skis mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah i didn't think about that yep mm-hmm yeah, you just have to be by a new body of water, but but even so, you know, like you were talking about before with the bot botanical gardens, you know, even um, those are great because they have, like you were talking about the 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 paths that aren't the terrain doesn't change a lot, and so they have even sometimes handicap accessible pathways, so that even if a child's in a, a wheelchair um, or another family member, that you can access and be outside in those types of environments so yeah and i think we've even seen camping they have can handicap accessible campsites i've seen those recently too a few years ago uh our family went out to visit the sierra mountains and hmm. what we did is we had different hotel locations at different spots as we moved hmm. from north uh, from south to north up the sierras so and then cool. <clears throat> during the day we have two or three or four different stops for short walks mm -hmm. and it was a really nice way to see a lot of oh, that is a, a large idea. environment and then mm -hmm. and then although i enjoyed camping a lot myself mm -hmm. we for the convenience we just stayed at various inns and hotels mm -hmm. and airbnbs and a different assortment frankly mm -hmm. getting breakfast along the way and uh, we had two cars because there's a lot of us and, <laughs> and it was a lot of fun yeah yeah that's uh, yeah it's kind of yeah a progressive kind of just uh vacation so and it's good to get out and stretch your legs because those long days in the car and you don't see anything you just see it from the window you know passing by might as well experience it and and enjoy little stops along the way oh you got to get out and walk around and enjoy the, the trails and, and nature mm -hmm. and being able to experience 
Mm -hmm. the air and the wind and the rain even. Sometimes it's fun to be out hiking in the rain. So I love running in the rain, for example, huh. and enjoy, enjoy the weather. Yeah, yeah, well, it cools you down, definitely. <laughs> So, you know, what, what is the importance for like the child, a child's brain to in getting outside? And because I think the mindset that we get is that I, I need more educational materials for my child. I need to teach them more. And so going outside just seems like a waste of time. So if they're in, especially, you know, we see this with kids that are in the population that are struggling and a lot of parents are like, but we got to drill and we got to do this. And, and maybe we don't, we don't even have time for that. But, um, I think you're going to tell me that that's probably the wrong way to be thinking. <laughs> well, so here's something important to know about our, our brain and how they develop. Our brains developed long before there were schools and roads and buildings and maps. Mm -hmm. Our brains actually de develop to learn to navigate the environment. Our brains develop to learn how to um, navigate the land and to know mm -hmm. where to find things you need, like where is water, where is food, where is safety, mm -hmm. where where are my kin, where, mm -hmm. where is danger. Our brains evolved or developed over time to be able to navigate the environment. So whenever we are out in the environment and whenever children are out there, their mm -hmm. brains are actually doing what they're really designed to do so well. Mm -hmm. um, I believe to this one to this day, one of the reasons hunting and fishing, for example, are so popular is it taps into part of what our brain was developed or designed to do on a daily mm -hmm. basis. And so when we have children outside in the environment, we give them an opportunity to allow their brains to do what it was really designed to do, which mm. is navigate the environment, to yeah. study the trees and the rocks and the land, mm. and to make note of the clouds and pay attention to the environment. And this yeah. allows a brain to grow in critical ways that it mm. otherwise might not. And uh -huh. brains are amazing. Uh -huh. If you get brains growing through any means, you have a lot more equipment to work with as you go out into other environments too, right, right, right back into the classroom or mm -hmm. on a job or managing other any other challenge or task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I've heard it said before that, you know, even to just take short breaks to go outside and just not be constantly doing, 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 and just, you know, take those breaks, even as an adult, it's, it's important, but I, so much more important as kids, their, their brains are just not meant to be doing workbook pages and reading and all of this constantly. So, yeah, I think that's, that's some, some great things to remember that, that they learn so much just by observing. And, and being outside because things change like you said even the clouds they're they're moving they're they're not consistent and what are they learning and through that process about you know wind flow and and just so many things that that are tough concepts to describe yet you just absorb them you do change it's another thing that our brains are designed to pay attention to change mm -hmm. and if we're in a room inside not a lot changes in many instances. Right. But when we're outside, everything changes, especially mm -hmm. if we're walking or cycling or running or skiing or moving right. or boating. It fast. <laughs> it fast. Yeah. And it's really helpful for our brains to experience that because mm -hmm. they're designed for that purpose to right. make note of change, what's novel, what's different, what's new. Yeah. And these are yet other reasons why being outdoors mm -hmm. is so wonderful for children of all ages. Yeah, yeah, I can see that and, you know, getting them into environments that they're not used to, like you were talking about, you know, just taking trips. Um, and, and so pulling them out of that, that, that normal. And, and then you have even more to observe that, you know, just even different animals, different types of trees, you know, the, the whole landscape changes. I think when we moved from Minnesota to Texas, the, the one comment my kids were like, the sky is bigger here. <laughs> you know, I don't know why, but it just seems bigger. <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas, right? <laughs> but 
last weekend, yeah. my sister-in-law went on a guided bird watching tour. Mm. And her email to me was fascinating. The things she saw and experienced and learned about. And that's yet another wonderful thing to do mm. outdoors. If it's, oh, yeah. a, if it's someone who, you know, a kid who wants to do something that's a little different than, say, camping or mm -hmm. um, you know, swimming or sailing or boating, right. bird watching can, can be fascinating. There's lots of mm -hmm. sanctuaries, and any sanctuary typically is going to be staffed by someone who cares about yes. birds and is eager to show people around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and to just learn about all those those different animals. I know my neighbor is an amateur bird watcher and she has her big camera and she walks around the neighborhood just trying to catch pictures. And I, I've taken my daughter out with her camera before and she gets frustrated when she tries to draw animals because they move. <laughs> but cameras tend to work a little quick, quicker. So she'll take that out and, and get pictures of different things. But well, you, yeah. know, you really hit the nail on the head with cameras because that's another way you can get kids interested in being outdoors by getting mm. them um photographing or making their own video blogs oh yeah you know, outside and mm -hmm. short videos uh, are really really exciting and fun ways mm -hmm. for children uh to experience the uh, being outdoors in the world mm -hmm. yeah and you know it's it's good for kids to video themselves so i've even seen some of you know, like do obstacle courses and they'll videotape themselves but it's like those those sports coaches, you know, they they videotape their team and then they show them this is what you did wrong, <laughs> you know, because when you, you you see yourself in your body and then you're removed from that, they can learn so much by just watching themselves and and seeing, oh yeah, maybe I didn't do that quite right. That's why I made that mistake or my foot missed that. And, um, so but that's another way to make it fun, I guess. <laughs> Um, so one question I was going to ask you, you know, with the trends with screen time and online learning and kids not moving around as much, um, what are the effects? Do you know anything about long-term, short-term um, learning and and just how that that affects kids by, by not having those experiences? Well, first of all, I know it's been incredibly challenging. What has it been? Fourteen months now. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. months, whatever it's been, it's been a challenging time. And the last thing I want to do is make anyone worry more than we've already worried. I so, know. so is it optimal that kids spend as much time in front of screens as they have in the past fourteen months or so? Mm. Clearly not. But is it going to do a lot of long-term damage? No. Um, it, but. Are there things that we can do mm. to make up for having spent so much time in front of screens? Yes. And this summer is a great time to really re rediscover the outdoors, rediscover mm. the value of play and recreation and uh, doing things uh, together as a family or mm -hmm. a group of kids together, whether it's in their Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or any other yeah. group of kids um and so so i don't think we, parents need to worry that there's going to be mm -hmm. long-term ill effects from the many months of more zoom mm -hmm. than any of us ever with <laughs> or any of anybody but i yeah. do uh, but i mm -hmm. think that we can make up for lost time mm -hmm. by increasing the amount of things that we do outside Hey, that's great advice. I, I love that. Yeah, we we can beat ourselves up as parents and say, well, you know, why didn't I get them outside or, or do all these things? And it, it, it was, it was a year we were just surviving. And um, to now be able to say, let's just put this, the books down. Let's put the all of that down. Let's plan something this summer to, to get outside. I, I love that suggestion. And, and hopefully a lot of people were. Well, I know the RV sales have just skyrocketed. <laughs> a lot of people are out camping. You can't even get campground sites. Um, we we had a battle for a campground site in one of the national parks. Within two hours, the whole thing after it opened up was full for the week we wanted to be there. So we got a space. But, um, but it's going to be crazy, I think, at the campgrounds this summer. And that's good. 
it's a really good thing. It's a way mm -hmm. to know that families are getting out and are going out to uh, parks and national mm -hmm. parks and getting outdoors and and find any excuse you can to <laughs> get in the car and go somewhere where you end up outdoors at a beach in the forest in a mm -hmm. desert in the mountains at a pond um, mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of other organizations that do things outside so you can get outside yeah. and mm -hmm. you can help um, restore uh, uh, areas of the environment that have been damaged there's a group that mm -hmm. are actually building they just have discovered that um, beaver dams are critical to the health of meadows and and mm -hmm. when beavers uh, Popu po beaver populations decreased considerably. Mm -hmm. There were no longer these beaver dams, and there are now mm -hmm. groups of people who go out and build these little miniature dams in creeks to create some stoppage. And these are the other ways that young people can get outside and enjoy the environment and find ways mm -hmm. to contribute to the health of the environments that all of us uh, benefit from so much. Yeah, that's if you got a builder, that would be a great thing for get them outside because normally they're just playing with Legos or whatever. And who wouldn't want to be, you know, building a beaver dam? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> what they actually do is they build them with rocks, and oh, there's a real oh. art and science to how these structures are made. <laughs> um, and there's a name for the restoration project that I'm thinking of, and unfortunately, I can't remember the name at the moment. But it's the kind of thing you could almost certainly, with a little poking around on the internet, yeah. find groups that are doing this sort of work. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about you know hooking up with with various groups that are are doing projects outside because that um, sometimes kids just need a purpose. Why are we going outside? You know, or I'm bored. I don't know what to do. And and so um, so having, I guess a something to go to or, or do or a group to be with or feeling like, oh, this has a purpose or, yeah, that's, uh, instead of just mom saying, get outside, I'm not <laughs> you can, of you being inside. You can <laughs> yes, you can do that too. <laughs> I think, what was it, my, I, maybe my guest last week, he said, it's okay just to shut the door and lock it. <laughs> Say, just figure out something to do. <laughs> I came from a family of five, and there are many occasions when my mother just chased all of us out of the house and said, don't come back till dinner. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some some neighborhoods, parents are okay with that, and unfortunately, when it's safe, yeah, when it's safe, it, yep. it can be done. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's so true. Um, so. You know, if if we're if we're busy, a lot of us have busy schedules, and we feel like you know I've just got to fit in maybe some outdoor time between work and between kids' school, and uh, maybe even summertime is you know booked. They've got various things their kids are going to. Um, do you have any suggestions for? Well, how do we just start incrementally? You know, just getting outside maybe together as a family and. Um, and just starting this process. Routine, Peggy. Mm -hmm. We know that if you get into a routine, it's easy to stay in it. Yeah. And start small. It could be every Saturday morning or afternoon, or every Sunday morning or afternoon. We're going to do something small mm -hmm. and, and short in duration. Right. And then build up to longer duration. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps greater frequency. Mm -hmm. if, and th this is if you're getting a lot of resistance. And I assume you're asking this question because you you have framed the question for um, a family where maybe the kids aren't that interested in being yeah. outside. But if you start small and keep the routine, mm -hmm. and, and humans are creatures of habit. Yes. And once we get accustomed to doing certain things at certain times, we actually want to be doing that thing. Mm. So if we say, yes, every Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, we go to this park for this mm -hmm. hike on this trail. Mm -hmm. Or um, we will do this you know, two afternoons a week after school or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So begin to build a routine and 
begin to get a sense of what is really appealing to your kids. Oh, you know, yes. you, you don't need a lot of variation. It might be mm -hmm. they like to do the same thing over and over and over, and that's mm -hmm. actually good. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. And so if, if your kids say, no, I like this park on this trail, uh -huh. and they don't want to do it, another park with another trail, that's fine. Mm -hmm. The yeah. point is getting outside um, and, and, and a routine will go a long way mm -hmm. towards helping with that. That's a great suggestion. I, yeah, it just, you develop those new patterns, those neural nets in your brain, you know, they start going to that instead of, well, let's just sit on the couch and, <laughs> and or just you know turn the tv on or you know you have to replace something that you're already doing and and just those small habits i love that suggestion that um that can build into a, a lot of things and and just paying attention to your kids i think we tell homeschool parents that all the time is you know watch your kids learn from them and then follow their lead because they um they sometimes just don't know what they're interested in and um, to trying things out. So, yeah. So, you know, as, as far as, you know, activities, are there any that are better for the brain than, than others? Oh. So this is a very good question you're asking. And the answer is yes. Hmm. And the activity that a child is going to engage in with the most vigor is the huh. best one. So it might be that a child loves shooting free throws in basketball, and they're really going to focus and engage in a high level. Hmm. Now, that is going to be much more successful than taking a kid to a park where they are not going to be happy or engaged. Mm -hmm. So it's really about following the passions, looking at what really piques a child's interest. Mm -hmm. Or it might be a child hates shooting baskets, but loves being in a park and on a train. Right, exactly. <laughs> I've always said, if you want to know what's going on inside a, brain's, a child's brain, look at their outside of their body. If their mm -hmm. bodies are energized and moving with purpose, you know the brains are too, and, a, yeah. and an active brain is a growing brain. And mm -hmm. so, if we have an activity and the child's body language is saying, "Oh, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy here. Oh yeah. goodness, not another walk in this, you know, <laughs> exactly. arboretum or what." Um, that's telling us a lot. Mm -hmm. So, so study your child's physicality, and that will tell you a lot about what what outdoor activity is the best one for them. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great way to look at it. I've never thought about that before. But yes, if they're engaged, it, it makes a huge difference than if you're just dragging them along. Um, and <laughs> sometimes, I don't know, my 20-year-olds, I'm still trying to figure out what they enjoy. <laughs> Although one just got a VR headset and he is like, sweating with this thing on and, and going on adventures. So that it's getting them moving. I'm just happy. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, they're all so different. And, and so, you know, they all can't be happy, I guess, on a family trip, but you know, you can kind of appease one here and there. And have you ever done that? You know, how do you, how do you manage that with your own kids? Just, you know, family activities, how do we all get a little something that we need? It's challenging and there's a balance and sometimes, especially as kids get older and they're, they're naturally inclined to want to seek separation and independence. Mm. And in those instances, maybe beginning to find other groups of young adults for them to be with. And I know it can be sad at times mm. when uh, we can't be together with our older children yeah. and because we uh, we want to be with them more than they want to be with us. And, <laughs> but that's a but actually that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. We want to see that in young people. We want to see them craving uh, the company of 
people other than family members because yeah. that's how we grow as a society. Mm, that's that's a very good point. I, I think it's yeah, especially as homeschool. I you know, longtime homeschoolers they they have a really hard time letting go of their their kids that are are getting older. And just I, I even remember just having a conversation with someone who wasn't a homeschooler and she's like it's just weird we're going on vacation without a child <laughs> you know and um you just have as a parent you just have to get that's the phase it's just, just something that we do and so yeah those are natural healthy feelings to have as a parent mm -hmm. it's normal to miss what meant so much when children right. were younger mm -hmm. um, my brother tells a story when his youngest child for he drew, drove his children to school every day mm -hmm. and then uh, suddenly one day he was driving his youngest child to school thinking oh goodness this is the last day i will ever be driving a child to oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> how incredibly wistful he was <laughs> Yeah. Well, like you were talking about earlier, we get into those patterns and we don't even think, you know, as a parent, this someday will come to an end. <laughs> Going to find a new pattern. Yeah. Like <laughs> so, this yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, we just um, have to, to figure out those. And, and, it, you know, as we're, we're coming out of this pandemic, I think we have that opportunity. Do you want to talk a little bit about bit about you know just opportunities we have ahead of us and and being able to take advantage of of that with teaching our kids and learning and growing together well we can all be very proud of ourselves one another and very proud of young people who mm. endured one of the most challenging years in decades yeah and i i believe that this generation of young people will be one of the strongest and best ever I think yeah. this generation of special young people, this pandemic generation, learned resilience and learned mm -hmm. creativity and learned resourcefulness and learned how to manage challenging dynamics and, yeah. and, and, and thrive, many of them, in the mm -hmm. face of great adversity. And mm -hmm. I, I think this was a true test. And mm -hmm. I think our, the young people of our society have passed the test with flying colors. And yeah. I've never been prouder of young people than I am today. And this is a very special, strong generation. And they, mm -hmm. they we will benefit from all the challenges they so successfully navigated. And I'm excited for them. I am too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you, yeah, you, you approached it that way because I've seen, you know, we were in such a rote, this is what you do. This is where you go. This is what happens after you graduate from high school. And this is what, you know, happens after you graduate from college. All those things were broken. And I think it made our young people realize, and I, I, I have two young adults and a teenager in my house, and it has been a tough year for them, but they have, they've gone, you know, inside and may, it made them realize I'm, I'm not just, you know, a hamster on a wheel and there, there's things that I can do, I can change. And, um, and, you know, you hope that, that that'll continue <laughs> when, when things get going a little bit more jobs are opening and, and all of that. But, um, it, it will, yeah. it, they, it, this is an amazing generation of young people. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of them. I'm very proud of their parents and educators and, everyone who yeah. endured uh, these past months and we've got it we do have just a few more months to go here we're not mm. entirely out of the woods but we're getting mighty close and it's uh really exciting yeah yeah well in texas i, I spoke at my first live conference a couple of weeks ago oh wonderful was amazing to see other people and to be yeah. able to interact so um wonderful. so yeah it's 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 happening so that's um, yeah it's encouraging so yeah yeah um we have michael and angela said hi on on youtube so thank you for for watching from there and i'm sure we have other people watching from from various um other places because we're broadcasting on facebook as well as periscope as well so um so glad that you are joining us tonight in this discussion about um outdoor learning and so um, some big takeaways have been you know daniel you were talking just about just enjoying spaces. 
I, I think even, you know, cultivated spaces, you know, mm -hmm. like those um, botanical gardens, but um, there's just so many places within our communities that are outside that we, we forget about that we can take our kids to. Um, I think we just think, well, that might be for a special occasion or whatever, um, but to, to make those regular habits as well, or to, to maybe just pick one off a list and, and go. So, um, so those, those have been some awesome things. And that there, there are times when we're not gonna be able to get outside as much and that's okay that, um, that we can, we can change our habits and definitely grow from those. So, um, so as we're wrapping up, is there anything else you want to share? And before we, um, we kind of share your resources and where people can find you. Oh, well, first of all, thanks again for having me. It's always such a pleasure yeah. speaking with you, and I'm so enthusiastic about the amazing work you're doing. Um, you. I'm grateful to your audience this evening for participating, and presumably this will be recorded for future uh, uh, um, viewings and listening. Mm -hmm. And um, I welcome uh, your, your viewers and listeners to reach out to me anytime. Um, I'm very easy to reach. DanielFranklinPhD.com. It's all one. DanielFranklinPhD.com awesome. is a really easy way to reach me. Um, and it looks like you're holding a copy of my book. I'm looking around for. Oh, you know, I actually I don't have it. I, it was it's on my bookshelf in another room. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I welcome. If you go to my website, uh, you can read reviews of my book and so forth. I wrote my book for parents just like you, mm -hmm. you know, teaching your children and, and care deeply about the quality of life and your relationship and, uh, and quality of education. So yes, um, any one of your viewers should feel free to reach me at danielfranklinphd.com. There's a contact Great. me um, uh, section and just send me an email or provide me with your phone number awesome. and I'll get right mm -hmm. back to you. Great. Yeah. And um, Daniel's book, um, Helping Your Child with a Language-Based Learning Disability is so, it's so straightforward. You, you, I mean, it's just, you wrote it for parents and it's easy to understand. It's not, I mean, you get into the meat and potatoes, but you take out all that really difficult technical stuff. <laughs> so so we know what to do and, and how to help our child right away. And and I love that. And, um, and Daniel also talked about that on when he was previously on our show. So you can look back on our YouTube channel. And yes, this broadcast stays on our YouTube channel. It'll come out in a podcast on Sunday too. So um, so our viewers can catch that either way, which those tend to be more popular. But then you also have Franklin Educational Services. Yes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's your book. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, I do, yes. Uh, my, my website, Franklin ED dot com where you can learn about my company and the wide range of educational services we provide uh nationwide we do it virtually yeah um and and we'd always done it virtually but <laughs> now we're doing it much more so we we have a very broad reach we have outstanding teachers and tutors and educators mm -hmm. who are really eager to provide specialized support to all kinds of learners of every age. Awesome. Yeah, I think I was talking to uh, some a vendor at the conference I was at a couple of weeks ago, and, and he said, you know, we don't need to just take advantage of local people who are doing virtual teaching. He said, we have the advantage of taking advantage of the best, you right. know, because virtual is virtual. It doesn't matter if they're in your backyard or across the country or in another country. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, why are we thinking that way? Um, and, and so I, I love that you say that is that, that you provide services that, you know, these exceptional services that anybody can access now that we're doing a lot virtual. So that's great. But, yeah, well, this has been a great discussion. I, I hope it has really opened up people's um, ideas and I, I thank you for you know sharing and just your enthusiasm for being outside you know it as someone who likes to be outside and I'm sure you you know had a lot of experiences growing up that that got you you know just motivated to be outside um, 
that's that's where it starts with our kids is just giving them those experiences that they carry on the rest of their life. So yeah. It's very important. I'm so glad that you're giving this important topic uh, airtime because mm. the out of doors is so wonderful and, and important to all types of development, social, emotional, brain development, mm -hmm. you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, the out of doors provides it when it comes to child development. Yeah, yeah. And I think we focus so much on therapy and, you know, all of these things that we can, you know, nicely fit into our schedule. And, and yet it's just so beneficial just to, to go play. <laughs> okay. And so just to, to reiterate that for, you know, four weeks over and over again to parents, let's just get outside. <laughs> it's important. So, but next week we are talking about taking therapy goals outside <laughs> with um, Sarah Collins, who is an occupational therapist. And so that um, that's going to be our topic next week on our broadcast. But, um, but yeah, thank you again. Daniel, I appreciate our discussion and um, all that you had to share. And I, I know I've been blessed by just what you had to share, and I'm sure our audience will be too. So uh, thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. Many good wishes to you, your family, and all of your listeners tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's always a pleasure speaking with you, Peggy. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again next week, right here, um, same time, same place, um, on a, for Empowering Homeschool Conversations. And um, and yeah, we'll, we'll keep talking about outdoor learning. So we're going to get you outside one way or another. <laughs> so bye, everybody. <laughs>